Okay, this is a video on my 87 R107 Mercedes 560SL. Uh, I've had this car from, oh, since about the year 2000, so probably 24 years, maybe even a little longer. Um, bought it from a neighbor, so it was a local car the whole time. Um, I bought this car probably right when they were worth nothing. And so... Uh, it was a car that uh, I'd got because I, I'd worked on a lot of these for people and I still do. Uh, I'm not a, uh, uh, what do you call it? A super guru, expert, uh, European, um, you know, replace everything artist, but uh, I do work on these comprehensively and, and get lots of ones, especially ones that have been sitting for years going for people. Uh, these cars are really nice, nice, high quality cars. Uh, they attract a crowd that, uh, how can I put it, that are very educated people, very decent people, but their education often uh, carries into them to believing they know a lot about cars, and they really don't. And so a lot of times they end up uh, realizing that, and then they throw them off to, to shops that just, just gouge their eyes out. And then they get tired of the cars because people charge, you know, $200 an hour or whatever it is to work on one of these when it's really, in my world, not any harder than one of these and certainly not as hard as a big block Mustang. Um, so uh, there are things about them that, that are temperamental. And there are things about them that are really high quality. Uh, one of the things that these cars do is they, they will take a lot of miles. They go a long time. Uh, this car here, like I said, it's it's... Nothing special as far as uh, it's not one of these low mile odometer cars. In fact, this is what I was going to get the video at. The car has about on the odometer, let me just say on the odometer, about 60 something thousand miles. And that odometer broke somewhere about a year into me owning the car. And now I don't drive this much. When I say I don't drive it much, you know, I may put 500 miles a year on it. That's a driver to me. I've got so many cars, I, I don't drive it much. But all of these Mercedes that have the speedometers that look, you know, I can't, I don't have any light, like that style, if you know what they look like there, uh, will all have the same issue. And there's a gear in those things. And if you look, look online, you'll see everything about them all the time that breaks and it usually breaks when you press the odometer reset the trip o trip reset and so these cars will have miles that are all over the place and the crowd that buys these cars always goes by the odometer they rarely look at the condition of these cars and so you see people buying these cars with 24,000 miles on them and god only knows what the miles really are because I'll tell you this, if you look back on my website, if you follow me and my stuff, we had one that was a literal, honest 500 mile car. And it, we sold it to, to Mercedes. They, they have it in their museum. And that particular car, the odometer broke on it too. So it does not matter how perfect the car is. They're all subject to braking. So what I'm getting at is be careful on these cars if you're into these, what the real miles are. Because it's real simple. My car shows 60 something thousand miles. It's probably got 70,000 miles. Who knows? I'm just, you know, you'll have to take my word for it. And am I honest about it? I'm probably more honest than most people because, you know, I, I look at cars that got a thousand miles. If they got a thousand miles or too many. This car's used up, worn out, the ends all over. So I use it as a driver. It's, uh, so that's what you have to watch out for. And so, those type of odometers, uh, just let me get one better picture in here, that when you hit that trip odometer reset on these, where is that sucker at? Oh, it's over here. When you hit that, it, it will break those things. And so, um, and then the, they, won't, they won't register. Like this one hasn't registered for 20 years. I'll fix it one day. In fact, I've got everything to fix it. I just, why? So, um, so you look at a car like this, and this is not a show car, but this is an extreme level detail car. This is an all original paint car. 
Uh, again, let me just reiterate this. This is not a sales pitch. I'm not trying to sell this car. This is my personal car. I'm just making a, 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 a hobbyist video on this. So don't email, text me, or whatever with my car for sale, because it's not. Um, there's plenty of them that have lower miles than this car <laughs> that you'll think is better by the numbers, but it's not. So uh, this is what they call the royal blue paint. And I had to, I had to go look it up because paint colors and paint names don't stick in my head. Engine firing orders and tolerance clearance and things like that do stick in my head but paint names I can't remember because I'm a right brain person. And so I'm, a, I'm you know, I'm mechanically oriented. And uh, so that's kind of the way it works. Uh, so it's royal blue and it's a rare color. And it may even look black in this video, I have no idea, but uh, it's, it's actually dark blue. And the uh, inside color is the tan, which they call it Palomino. And I remember I had to go back and look at that too because I couldn't remember that name. And these are the original everything, seats and, and all of this. So this car has been nothing but garaged. And uh, I'm just showing what one of these can look like. That some people will, you know, pay sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 for thinking that they're getting a 20,000, 10,000 mile car that the odometer was broken on for all of its life. And uh, so you have to watch out for that. Carfax, oh, you buy cars on Carfax, then, you know, you're taking a chance. Don't, it's just a risk. It's real easy because my car, if I wanted a Carfax, it would show the miles it had back in 2000. And then when I fixed the odometer, it would show just a couple more miles if I wanted to, to cheat that way. But uh, like I said, there's, the car's low enough miles where I don't have to do that, but it's not a brand new car. <clears throat> so... Some of the things that I have done to these cars, this car anyway, are the wheels, obviously. These are BBS wheels. And these are hard to find. There's the, I think they're called the, uh, uh, they're usually called the R107 BBS wheels. But these have a specific number. They're like R1, I don't know, R109 wheels, because the R107 is the car. And the, uh, these wheels are different because the 560 SL is a different car. It has bigger brakes. And so if you look at that closeness of that brake, these wheels are designed specifically for the 560 SL. And so these are very hard to find. You can get the other wheels, the I think the 109 BBS, and put them on a up to 85 car. Uh, even a 500 SL or a Euro 500, you can put those on. But you can't put them on a 560. 560's got more hardware. And 560 is a, is a more powerful car. And it's a better car than even the Euro 500. I've worked on those. You know, those are neat. They're fine, whatever. Uh, now, the downside to these U.S. cars, and here, here, let me go back. The 560 SL is only built for the U.S. market and some Australia and Japan. So the right-hand drive ones are, are over there. So Europe, these cars were not made. They weren't made for Europe. You couldn't get one of these in Europe. And so what makes these kind of collectible is all the Europeans want these cars now because they couldn't have them when they were new. So now they want them. That's what's driven the value of these things way up. And so a lot of these get exported. And so for all of you people that are, you know, Euro lovers and all that stuff, uh, we call these these bumpers the park bench bumpers. And the joke is, is you can fit two people inside of the car and you can pit, fit eight people on the bumper, four on the front sitting and four on the back sitting. So, uh, and you probably really could if you wanted to. And so they were U.S. bumpers and they are, they are, they're bigger. But, you know, you have to start thinking that it has, it has a look to it and it's okay. And I've had these, we've converted the, the Euro bumpers on a 560 and they look great, especially with the Euro headlights and bumpers. But guess what? If you care a dime about the value, you just killed it. And so, because you go for that look, people uh, are purists. This car is a very purist-driven car. I said it goes back to the crowd. They're, they're very well-read, but can't quite see some of the obvious things in front of them sometimes. But what I've done with my car is, is, is just add wheels, basically. And I've done some mechanical things to it that, you know, 
I, I, if I owned one of these, any of these again that I was gonna keep, I would do the same thing. And one of those things is uh, these cars were meant, they were not designed to have the catalytic converters on them. They really weren't. Uh, it was just a little bit too early uh, to do that. And so the US cars have these four catalytic converters that are on these things. And there are four of them. There are two, there are two on each bank in a row. And they basically, not only they choke the car down, they heat it up extreme. The, so the floorboards get hot. The whole underside of the car just bakes. And it's not a good thing. And so to keep this car all original, what we did is we took the exhaust apart and got rid of the inside of the material in the cat and put it all back. So it has, it has a unique sound to it. Uh, and it runs a stock muffler and it's all the exhaust. You look at the exhaust, it looks totally original, but it doesn't have the material in it anymore. And so that's your stock muffler there, um, stock exhaust. So that helped a lot on this car. I can tell you, man, you know, these are rated at 230 horsepower and really they kind of are underrated. Uh, they, they have a little bit more power than you think they do. And it's, they're a very, very capable car, especially in their day, they were fast. And so that probably, I, I have no idea, I'm not gonna put a number on it, but it is a seat of the pants huge difference between not having the cats and having the cats in these cars and this car revs out really hard pulls really good and just all in all drives good and stays cooler does everything better so that's one of the things there and of course you know if you're a californiaite you're probably not going to get away with that but uh so don't take my lead by doing something that you may regret but it does help the car uh Again, the wheels are just the biggest improvement on this car, and it's not because of the way they look. I, you just pretend they're silver flat discs. It's because of the offset on the wheels. That stance on this car is now the way it should have been. Before those, uh, the wheels that came on the 87 to, uh, excuse me, 86 to 89, uh, they're better than the bunt cake wheels, as everybody calls those, but uh, they're not attractive either. They're, and the offset was horrible. They're sunk way in. And the car just kind of is a sloppy boat because of those wheels. These, you know, we run a little bit more performance oriented tire on it. And these are eight inch wide wheels. And they have a much better offset. I don't remember the offset numbers off the top of my head, but it's, you know, this wheel specific to this car. So uh, it helps everything. And I still run the stock shocks on these cars. And the reason I did, I usually, I'm a huge fan of putting like Bilstein shocks on things like that. But I've done it on these cars. And guess what it does to them? If you've owned these and you've done it, you know what I'm talking about. It jacks them up. So you take, a, even on a stock wheel, you will take this nice low looking clearance that these have and put an inch and a half gap on them. And so it requires you to put lowering springs on the cars if you go to the Bilstein shocks on these cars. Uh, they do drive better with the Bilstings, I'll tell you that much, but these are the, I think they're, they're Bogue, B-O-G-E shocks, and uh, I had to source uh, an original set for this. It was really hard to get because I didn't want to raise the height of the car up, and I didn't want to change springs on it. Uh, I said, it's not, a, it's not a race car, it's not a, it's not a, not a parking lot track cone dodger, and it's not a circle track car, but it handles very, very well, extremely well with these wheels. It's a, it's a huge, and the tires uh, improvement on the car. Uh, personally, I would never drive this car if it didn't have this type of wheel on it. I, I just can't stand the look of the other ones. They just look, they look anemic. The whole car looks anemic. Um, but that's my personal opinion. And of course, that's just simple. 20 bolts. <laughs> if you had one of these cars, you could change it back, change it one way or the other. So not a big deal. Um, and you know, the gold on this car accents this stripe, which uh, was on the car when I got it. So, um, and that is not factory. I believe that was put on by the dealer, uh, which I think was Stevenson Motor here in Dallas that, that, uh, that sold this car. And uh, so matches the Palomino interior. That plate is just a antique plate that I've got on here. It represents nothing for where the car's at. Um, of course, your top, you got your big alarm, man. And we go back to the inside. 
And these are, ah, those are replacement mats. But uh, So one of the other really weak, weak points of these cars is the radio. This has a, a Kenwood system that was put in in 1988. This is an 88 system. And the previous owner had had it put in there. So it's, it's nice. And it's just all the, all the factory speakers are in the stock areas and things like that. Has a small amp on it and sounds for fairly good. So yeah, the, the radio is on these cars were junk. And so, uh, as far as value, I don't see any value of having the original radio in these cars, especially if you're going to drive it or use it at all. But I do see value of having a error correct vintage system in the car. So I think that's kind of neat to have one that if you look that model number up, that's when it was sold is what the age of this car was. So that's a nice, nice touch. If you go put a brand new, you know, whatever and a screen in there, no, no, don't do that. That's, that's horrible. So, and then of course the dashes on these cars just shatter and it's very hard to find a true original. There's a lot of replacement uh, caps that go on these things, but, uh, this is what original looks like. And of course, this is an original used car, not a, not one that's a, a garage queen. And it is a garage queen, but it's been driven. Um, and then of course, the wood all cracks in these things and you can replace none of the woods cracked on here. None of the woods cracked here, but I got one down here, a little split line there. You know what? I'll live with it, I don't care. It's fine. <laughs> and, some of the stuff, you know, the finish out on these cars is real nice with these, these chrome things there and parts like that. Now, the top on this car is nice, but as with many of these tops, when I got it, I, uh, he had it in his garage. I remember going back you know, around 2000, 2000, maybe a month after I got the car because he couldn't get to the top. He had piled up so many things on it. And uh, the way you store it, he, you know, these little edges got bent a little bit on it, but it's not bad. You can replace it, but it's fine for pure 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 perfection you would would uh, want to change that if you had a car like this but it's fine shows the patina and here's the, a true telltale sign of this car of the era so when this car was bought new he had at the the dealership a cell phone factory you know of the era and you can see where the antenna was mounted and so it had the black cell phone antenna back here and I just took it off and I touched up where it did there because I didn't want to repaint anything that's original. And so uh, you can see flaws like that. So those are nice things of patina that show the age of the car and its originality and the things you look for. Um, of course, if you have a, the different years, these cars were made for four years and going off the top of my head, I think 560 SL is like 40, 45,000, 46,000 were made total. That's for all four years combined. 86 was the first year. Uh, and 86 does have an inherent issue with the timing chain tensioners uh, that were fixed by 87. And, and I don't know if there was some that were in a, uh, in a, in a gear middle thing. Don't quote me on that, but they did have some problems with those where they rattled and had a lot of problems, kind of like the 380 SLs had and all that other stuff too. So by 87, they did correct that. So 87, 88, 89 are all the same mechanically. The only thing that you will see different on the car between an 87 and 89 roughly is the placement of this light. That, that's gonna be 86 and 87 position. And if you go back here, you're gonna have an 89 position here. So a little, little different. That's it. And these are kind of the things that, that can tell you these cars were never designed to have these lights on them. Watch this. You can just take this whole light and just, you can flex the trunk. So you can see it bounce. So you know that's an add-on for the U.S. market. Uh, and when you close the trunk, you can kind of see that too. When they, when they bounce around, bump. But that's the little amp and uh, CD changer that was added to the car back in the day so kind of cool that's the trunk of it and yeah and the the a lot of people don't realize uh, the lighting's right on this that gray finish is absolutely correct on these cars all the trunks on these these uh 107s were finished in that gray 
and it and it looks unfinished. It looks like you know, hey, somebody put a new trunk lid on that car and and they uh, they just repainted the top. No, that's the way it is. There's factory you know stickers still on it, but that's the way they're supposed to be. So don't if you're looking at one of these cars, you're not familiar with them. Don't panic on that. That's the way it should be. Uh, they are lacquer cars. This is a lacquer paint, so you can buff them out. And a lot of times you will see these cars that the paint has, um, not crazed, because if you have a car that crazed, there's nothing you can do to fix it. Just kind of, kind of gotten dull. So you see a lacquer car, especially a red one, man, you can shine those things up good. When I got this car, you know, it was, it was nice, but it wasn't perfect. And we were able to just do a, a little buff job and detail it up and shines up real good. In fact, you know, I should probably do it again. I haven't done it in a while, but uh, the paint is definitely salvageable on some of these that are nice. <clears throat> Door dings are a big problem on these cars, especially with the higher cars. You have to watch, uh, especially this body line right here. You, know, you park next to SUVs and Susie Homemaker cars, wham, they can just take your car right out. And of course you can PD, I've had, I, I did PDR this car <clears throat> back when I got it, around 2000, uh, it had a few dings, a few small dings, and I can't even remember where they were, but there's not one in it now. And I've just, you know, a testament, I don't park next to anything, so I don't have that problem, but people that use them as drivers certainly will. Then we go under the hood, let's see. Oh, power antennas. That's another neat thing about these cars. Um, usually they're pretty reliable on the antennas. Um, they have different positions that they're auto sensing antennas. You hear the fuel pumps kick on these too. These have the 560 SLs have two fuel pumps. They're both in the back, and they if you let them sit, ethanol fuel can damage them. I fix, I replace a lot of those. So you got the two different positions. The antenna will go up, and this is an original factory antenna. And then it will sense uh, if you put it in the middle position, sense the radio signal through the radio and it'll adjust itself down to a lower height. Now, that's with the factory radio. This car doesn't have a factory radio. I'm just doing that myself now. But the, the antenna will come on with the radio and things like that. And you can set it to be at different heights when it goes off. So if you leave it right here, let's for example, it'll come back on right there. So that's nice with the, the aftermarket radio it works that way too. I usually just leave it off unless I'm just playing with it. Um, air condition on these cars. This is the big one. For me, being in Texas, I have worked on a lot of air conditions on these cars and I've bought cars uh, different. In fact, I've had several of these 107s and it's the only one I've kept because it's the prettiest one to me. And of course it's the one that uh, the odometer broke and everyone's going to just throw their hands up if you're honest with them. But they're missing out on the best car, of course. <clears throat> so the air conditions, if you can, especially if you're in the southern part of the United States, you want to keep them R12. Why do you want to keep them R12? Because the evaporator size on these cars are very small. They were designed for R12. R134 is not as efficient. So if you convert an air conditioner to one of these cars, it sucks. I mean, if you're in New York or Chicago, you probably will say, oh, it runs fine for me. I've never had a problem. But if you're in Phoenix, Dallas, Houston, oh, shit. It's good. Pardon my language. It's horrible. So R12 is the way to go. This car has always been R12. Uh, you can tell pretty easy if they have the, the R12 cap on here, if they've been converted. And a lot of times if they do it uh, according to the... Uh, uh, the right way, it'll have a sticker, conversion sticker there too. So, <clears throat> but you can convert them back if you wanted to. So, uh, um, it's hard, usually requires a new compressor anyway, and then flushing the system out. But so that's a good one to look at under the hood. There's a lot of things. These are called the, the fuel injection basically is a carryover in a, in a roundabout way from 71. And, uh, even older than that, so some of the older Mercedes have this is a mechanical fuel distributor that's underneath here and you'll have eight fuel lines that come off of that to each individual cylinder port. This is called the KE jet and it's the K version with the electronics. So it doesn't have the, 
uh, the older ones like the 450s and some of the early, the uh, 5 or 380s have a, uh, they call it a heater uh, regulator right here. And so it's fuel lines going to that. And those are notorious problems. But these don't have it. Um, they have a single fuel pump. 560 has dual fuel pump. 560 has bigger brakes. Um, a lot of things. Uh, this is correct. You'll see a lot of radiators changed that are black. They're supposed to be silver. Little tabs here. These break all the time. Um, in fact, I've had to replace this one of mine. I got a factory one probably 15 years ago and put it on there. My chains are still original because the motor's fairly low mile, you know. But uh, you do have to change those. Oh, I'd say probably on an 87 to 89. I wouldn't even change them until they started rattling, but and they don't even really do that to maybe 150,000 miles. Uh, water pumps, of course, you'll have to do. Not that hard to do, but I'll put all the new belts on them if you do it. What else have we had to do on these? These are these are cool. That's a lot of your even newer Mercedes use this. This is the fuel line passes through the air condition, so the air condition cool, cools your fuel real race car stuff there and so this motor you know these 5.6 motors they run decent and they run hard and you can get on the highway and run these things fast transmissions are unique too uh, i think the gear ratio on these are to 87 maybe like uh, somewhere in there high twos but it's a four speed but guess what? Your fourth gear is a one-to-one -one ratio in these. All of these Mercedes four speeds are one-to-one -one ratio. So first gear is real quick. And it has electronic kick right there. Second gear, third gear. And then that's not overdrive. That's one-to-one. -one. Um, so all the 560s, all the, all the 107s have very, very... What do you call it? Just utilitarian stuff. I mean, these nice, big, heavy cranks. All the seats are mechanical. There's no power seats. You have to move them by hand. It's not an option. And that's the way it should be. The mirror, no electronics. It's mechanical. It's not an option. That's the way it should be. Now, the passenger side mirror is electric, so you can't reach it there. Uh, older years had the handle over there. This one has an electric deal here. Uh, climate control systems, pretty straightforward. Off. Um, that's your economy. It doesn't run the compressor there. All these three positions run the compressor. Um, so you kind of want to run it there. Then auto will run, speed the fan up low and high. Very utilitarian. Very straightforward. Very uh, simple. Good old-fashioned buzzer. Uh, one thing I do not like, and I may do one day just if I get bored, is get rid of that steering wheel and get rid of the airbag steering wheel. That SRS this year was another add-on. And so uh, more than likely, it probably doesn't even work. But nevertheless, the if you had an older steering wheel, and then I think that's a it's, a, it's an asset to the car, kind of like the wheels are. So what else? The top on this car is blue. Uh, and you know they have plastic rear view, rear mirror or windows in the uh, soft top, so you have to watch those. And then of course, this has still got the factory original hood pad on it, and it's it's hanging on by dear life. And I'm look I'm, I'm dreading the day where I have to replace that. And the best way to do these most of the time is is loosen the hinges up, stack that hood straight up and down and do them. And you have to glue them and it might take several days to do it right. And you can see the nine's coming loose here. But I need to put a little glue on there, see if I can save it. There's the original tags for the car there. And so guess what? This engine is all stock, all original, but it's got a K and N air filter in it. Hey, it's not original anymore now, is it? So that's one of the, the things there. Um, some of the other things that get really bad with these cars are these fog lights. They get so fogged up, it's not funny. 
and they're hard to come by. You can get the glass pieces aftermarket, uh, but finding a good original one's hard to do. And so those are both original on this car. I've taken them apart and cleaned, you know, the inside of them out, but uh, I leave them just the factory ones. And of course, down here gets just destroyed and usually never washed on most of these cars because people can't bend below their, their knees. Uh, so that one's clean. Headlights, the US headlights, Australian uh, headlights all say halogen. So this is correct. Each one's halogen. They don't say Wagner. They don't say GE. They don't say, you know, uh, Chief Auto Parts or AutoZone. They say halogen. So that's correct. <clears throat> and of course, it had the, had the Euro headlights. You can change those out. And you can even change those out and leave the park bumpers, park bench bumpers on it if you wanted to. I've seen them done that way, too. Um, seen a lot of gray market cars that way, but... Gray market, you know, is a tough, tough, tough call. Because not only are you dealing with, it could have been 100,000 miles when it was brought into a gray market car, then you're dealing with a known odometer issue that, <laughs> that these all break. And so once you know that odometer all break, and if you're trying to buy one of these cars, look at the car, go by condition, ignore the miles, I'm telling you, because you really don't know what these cars have. And it could be your best friend selling to you, and he could have forgot that the odometer was broken on that car and forgot how many miles he drove. Uh, it's just the way they are. And so once you learn that on these cars, it's, a, it's an obstacle you can avoid. Uh, not to avoid the car, but to avoid that misnomer of what you see on that odometer is really what the car has. And that this goes for the, uh, you know, the... Uh, the S series to any of the, even the, the E series, any of the cars that have that three gauge cluster that looks like this is going to have that same, that same issue. That same issue is going to have. So if it has that, you're going to have that problem. And I said, it doesn't matter how old the car is, how perfect the car is. Um, that's an issue to look out for. And of course, you know, windshields are, when you start getting the low mile cars, these are kind of telltales too of, of what the windshield is. You can see down in here, this is discolored some, and that's just from age. I've seen lower mile cars even discolored down in here for age, that's not from sun on these. Uh, then of course you'll have the rock chips in this car. It doesn't have any rock chips, but you can see miles that are driven on this car has it's not a it's not a, a thousand mile car by any means of course that's original there to the car um, you can replace those so you have to watch out if somebody replaced those not a big deal but it's just a quick thing to look at i'm just going by things that i know from owning a lot of these cars and then of course the coolant bottles uh, you can tell the how how well the car is aged by the color of these uh if you see a really, really white one of these, somebody replaced it. Because even a thousand mile car that was in a museum at this age has some yellow to it. This one here, uh, if you see it just bright white, more than likely it's replaced. But if you see it kind of in this, you know the car has, if you see these kind of colors, coloration in this, just that alone will tell you the car has probably had a pretty easy life. And so if they're totally yellowed out, yeah, then you, you know it's been just heat baked a lot. I took the heat bacon off of this car a long time ago with, that, with those converters. So, And that heat bacon does a lot of damage to these cars. <clears throat> so, Fuel pumps, you don't have to drop the tank to replace. They're under their... I uh, can't really show you because there's no lighting, but underneath the videos for that so if you ever have one of these that don't have the fuel pump working they've been sitting a long time you can drop the fuel pumps out and then drain the tank there they are right there uh you can kind of see them there and the tank will gravity drain out and you can add fresh fuel what i do if i have one of these that has bad gas in it that it's not to totally bad but the fuel pumps are going bad and things like that I just start gravity dumping fuel into them until they clean up. And if the 
that doesn't do it, then you got to pull the tank, and that's a lot of work. You want to try and avoid that. What else can I show? Uh, so there's there's guys that do nothing but specialize in these cars that'll that'll know a lot more about these than I do, but like I said I've been around these things for 30 years longer, and uh, like I said it's not my specialty, not my expertise, but just being a car professional I've I've learned a lot about them and and I enjoy them. I, I like this car. Out of all the classics that I have, which is quite a few in here. On a nice day, that car is the one I enjoy just driving to enjoy. Because one, the way this car looks on the road, it gets a ton of attention. And two, it drives right. Three, it's reliable. Four, it's, this particular car's got enough miles on it. I don't, I'm not concerned that I'm wearing it out uh, and, and, you know, taking away a valuable classic. I'm a, I get to enjoy this car, and so that's why I do enjoy it. And so if you're looking at uh, 560s or any 107, they are good cars. Uh, you just have to know them. And in fact, I would say this car is much, much more reliable than buying like a 2004 uh, or newer SL or 2003 or newer. If you have an R129, which is the next generation from this up, uh, you know, we'll go look at an R129 real quick. These are very good cars too. They will have inherent top uh, cylinder issues, but in general, these cars are really reliable. And so that's a good car there. It's the next generation that is a troublemaker. And so and you have to just watch out for that. And I'm American car guy, so so take this from from an all American Corvette guy, Camaro guy, Shelby guy, muscle car guy, race car guy. That this is one of the really one of the best cars made. They, they call them the uh, well, they call them the Panzer, the tank. Uh, that's kind of the nickname of these cars because they are tanks. And people, oh, it's so heavy, but you know, this car is lighter than a new BMW 3 Series by a long mile. So it's it's not really that heavy by today's standards. And it is small. If you're a really tall person and you have just a comfort issue with you, every, every car is too big because you're tall, you're not going to like this car. The top off of them, they're not too bad. With the top on, you're going to hate them. But if you're, you know, anywhere between a man at up to 6'1 or so like that, the car's fine. But if you're like some six five, you know, player or something like that, no, you're gonna hate it. That's a fact. <clears throat> so, don't know what else I can say. Hopefully, uh, this is just an enjoyable vi video that I'm just kind of throwing out there to uh, to actually look at my own car and have a reference of it later. And uh, if you get anything out of it. Uh, I hope so, and if uh, I've sensed there's some misinformation, I hope I didn't because I'm trying to remember everything by the top of my head. But again, 560 SLs, 86, 87, 88, 89, they were only made in the U.S. only, or in, in Australia and Japan. And those are right-hand drives. So uh, they are collectible. They are desired by the Europeans because they could not get them. They were built for us because the motors were too big for their market. Think about that. Everyone says, everything's better in Europe, right? Nope. This car is better in the United States, and this is the, as good as it got. And that's the, the best it got was 89. That's just collectability-wise uh, because it is the last year. Uh, 86 does have the chain issue, so uh, just case by case on 86. 87 and 88 are fine. No, no advantage of one or the other. Uh, so it's just... That's kind of the, the story of a 560. Thanks for watching.